<sighs> yeah, I need to go. I need to give me an old school retro Nickelodeon shirt. I just especially I with Hey Arnold on the hey, hey, my boy Hey Arnold was the shit back in the day. Yes, and it got uh, uh, then monsters. I love Rocco. I don't know. All real monsters aren't here. No, this is um Norbit from All Real Beavers, Cat Dog, Reptar, Arn, Ren, Rocco, Helga. Yes, I have another one I just bought. It's a, I think I'm sorry, like a long sleeve. I just bought that. Like, I don't know. I'm just filling my Nickelodeon fantasy. I can't see. Mm. Oh, uh, it's Reggie from Rocket Power. Rain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Cat Dog. It, anyway, nice. uh, we're at next show. <laughs> okay, yeah, you go wear next show. All right. So, all right, Kira, what are we missing out on? Mm, let's see what we got to catch up on. I know what it is. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy, Ken Jones, once again with another show. Uh, we're here to do uh, an episode breakdown of Falcon and the Winter Soldier 1 and 2. We're going to be discussing a little bit about Justice League, probably a little bit about the Suicide Squad. And... Yeah, I think this is about it. Uh, what we're going to cover, just a little bit of it. But uh, I just want to say shout out to y'all. Shout out to the people who watch uh, the videos on YouTube. I really do appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all for subscribing, liking the videos. Um, like I said, Kier, I really do appreciate you. You were fantastic. And, you know, checking the stats, you know, look like people really latched onto your videos. So, so I said, um, in you got something nerdy to talk about call me mm -hmm. and it the seems thing like is, a lot of stuff is starting to come out at the same time so yeah and the thing is if you want a pretty face and want somebody to talk about some nerdy shit that's Kiera so, <laughs> not, that not me <laughs> but thank you. oh no no like me and out there like I said me and out there love love pretty female nerds and stuff like that that just anything that they can relate to and they little geeky nerdy shit, they're gonna latch on to that. So look if you all right, so it's slide in my DMs. <laughs> yeah, they probably gonna be coming, so get prepared. So let's see. The first one we're gonna talk about real quick is probably won't be that long. It probably will be. So we go we go do nope. an episode breakdown of Huh? Uh, the episodes? Okay. Start yeah, right we're gonna do we're gonna do a quick uh breakdown of, of Falcon and Winter Soldier. So I'm gonna start with you, Kier. What what are your thoughts on Falcon and Winter Soldier right now at this point? Um of the first episodes. I really would like to say I was pleasantly surprised by it because I told you last time, um, this was the show that I was uh least excited about. So yeah. when I watched the first episode and, and the, the reason I said I was the least excited about it is because for the reason that I said that I was the least excited for it was the reason I was like, well, it's not that bad. It's because like it's basically a really, really long Marvel movie chopped up into episodes. It's just like right off the bat of this first episode, we got um, a end of a movie fight level with the Falcon fighting randoms, you know, and it was just like they just wanted to show you how good quality TV is made, basically. Because you notice this is only six. This is only six episodes. It was meant to be the first, so that you know what you're getting into with Marvel. But Wanda Vision already set the score with that with nine. So this one's shorter, mm -hmm. but this one's longer. But overall, I'm kind of, I'm invested in the storyline. I think mm -hmm. it's really, really. I like the Easter eggs, and I think it's really um, better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I woke up Friday and that was the first thing I watched and um, like it was WandaVision the first week that it came out I watched it I think Saturday because I was just like ah. but I was actually into it I was actually really into it and it was really cool to get to see the background of like what they do when they're not the Avengers and yeah. you see, see that a lot diff like two different ways like what Bucky does when he's not killing people and what Sam does when he's not you know running around with Captain America which is apparently not getting paid because I always thought that mm. I was, it's like you know Clint Barton um, Hawkeye has a family so it's like most of these exactly. people 
really need to support anyone but themselves. And if we're running around saving the world all the time, I really don't need to support myself. But it's like Sam didn't have any type of money from being dusted, from being an event. And that's just crazy to me. That's so crazy. Yeah. It's really mind blowing for I mean, don't get me wrong. That's that's a that's a great thing that you pointed out. Like Clint, Hawkeye, like the dude straight. Like shield and took care of him, have like given his family like out of the system and all kind of shit. And probably like a lot of money on the side just in case. You know? Mm-hmm. But you 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 would think that of all these time, like, you know, people them for what the adventures had went through, especially with the team members, like mm-hmm. Just give you something to fall back on because the world is not going to be the same right after people come back after the snap. Right. Like, we we literally worked with the richest man in America. Tony Stark's estate didn't have something set aside for the Avengers, at least. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, in real world-wise, I feel like they should have had, like, a relief fund, kind of like a COVID thing. Like, people give them, like, some starting money because... Some people, their houses are gone, their cars are gone, my bank account's gone, my credit's like gone. Somebody, like somebody from S.H.I.E.L.D. Or, or, or somebody out of that whole situation should have went to one of the Avengers. Like, you got, what you call, Falcon, he got a family. You know, his family ain't going to be the same either. Um mm-hmm. Peter Parker, you know, he's a kid at school. Family probably ain't going to be the same. And, well, he's kind of taken care of now because, you know, Iron Man took is taking care of him a little bit. They um, said they brought, they brought that up in Spider-Man, um, Far From Home. Or home, Far yeah. From Home. Because they brought that up because uh, May said after the blip, she blipped back into her apartment and people were there. Yeah. So it's just like, now what? Am I just a homeless it's weird. Like, they don't really touch on that. I mean, my thing is this it's like, if, if anybody fight alongside with me risking their lives and when shit get done, like, hey, here's a little money. Like, life life is better for everybody right now. So, let me give you some money to have some for you to right. fall back on in your family. You know, kind of like what, you know, what Batman had did for Superman, uh, you know, at the end of Justice League. He took. He went back and took care of his mom. He was like, you know, how did you get it back? I said, I bought the whole bank. <laughs> you know, which was very unnecessary. But hey, go off, sis. Oh yeah. So I, I I get what they're trying to do. Like they're trying to just have more of a heroism for these characters. Besides, like you know, they doing more than fighting for money. Like they doing it for the sake of the universe and all that shit. That's all well good, but. I guess they just do things just to make more yeah. dramatic. Right. Yeah. I just feel like, I guess after five years, no one even really like assumed anyone was coming back. Well, yeah, so, that's true. Because they did say that Monica's mom sent up a contingency plan for in case they do come back in WandaVision. But that was just the just in case. I mean, the Avengers are half gone too. So no one expected the world to, you know, fix itself and that's a lot about what they touch on with in in um falcon and winter soldier the flag smashers they are saying that the world is catering more to the people that came back from the blip instead of the people that struggled while we were still here so they would rather go back to how it was the other way you know what i mean i like like what they did with the flag smasher because in the comics he's one guy and he's an organization in 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 this and i kind of like i like that and um he was Carl you in the in the comics, but they changed yeah. it or swapped him. So I think I thought that was cool how they did it because what they stand for really isn't plausible as something one person could do. <laughs> so yeah. it makes sense. Like what he stood for is like, can you really do that by yourself? So they I like that idea. They make they they tweak things and it's not stupidly tweaked. Like it makes sense while you why like how they changed Bucky instead of being his little sidekick to being his best friend, like, that made more sense. Mm-hmm. But it, Captain America be running around with a little boy on, on enemy lines. Yeah. <laughs> like, in life, so I thought, like, I, 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 um, I like Marvel for tweaking stuff like that, where it makes sense for the time we're in now, because 
the DCU is not, they don't get it yet. And it's like, huh? Every time a movie comes out, like, do I need to care about that? And Batman versus Joker? Or is this something that's its own? Or, you know, because like the the Flash movie and then the Suicide Squad movie, Snacks, the Zack Snyder cuts, like, which one should I pay attention to? Because, you know, their storylines were different. Yeah. Every story kind of tweaked in both in each movie. So it's like, yeah. what am I going with? And they, they threw the Joker from the Suicide Squad, which I loved, into the Snyder Cut. So it's just like, so does that, does that count there? Or, and then it was like, now there's a new Suicide Squad. And it was like, so... We gonna get to that. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, they're all over it's, the it's, 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 Like, we gonna, like I said, I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna try to say that for last because everybody is is pretty hurt like we was amazed but hurt at the same time after the Snyder Cut had came out. But I'm I'm gonna say that for last because it it hurt a lot of us. Um, one thing I really like about the Captain Falcon, the Winter Soldier, is like you know you go through and they really like I said, they really try to be in tune with the comic books and relate mm-hmm. everything that what's going on in reality, like. These people are literally like sitting down and taking their time and and meshing it into a one great show where not only it relates to comic but it hits you in real life. Like um, a lot of people didn't know that we actually had like a black Captain America way yeah. back in the day. No, I, nobody didn't. Nobody, nobody didn't know about Isaiah like, Bradley. The Black Wonder Woman, who's her her sister, who was made out of ebony instead of ivory stone, um, mm. and she has a black sister. And nobody knew. Nobody knows that. And I was like, how do I? Was I really that in tune as a kid? I guess, well, well, I guess, I guess what it is is like you know you got really like deep comic book people out there, mm-hmm. you know like deep Harry Potter fans and Lord of the Rings hobby fans and stuff. But when everything gets out in the movies. Like people gonna go based off the movie first, then right. the comic books, and you know, and then once they see that, and then when you hear somebody say it, like, "Hey, you know, Whitaker did this and did that," they be like, "What? Are you for real?" Like, no, no way. Like, we don't see that in the movie. I said, but right. you got to look back at the comic books. <laughs> like, the comic books is what's gonna matter because this is where they're getting their information off of. Yeah. But anyway, that's blueprint. That's why I oh, feel yeah. like. John, like for John, the same with the John Walker. Like everyone's like, "Oh, I hate him," and I'm like, "Well, good, good," because he's not here for America to be like. Oh, I feel like people think that this John Walker is supposed to be the new MCU Captain America, and everyone's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, it like they replaced Chris Evans as actor," but that's no. not his own character who you don't like him because he's Captain America, but you're supposed to not like him because he's Captain America now. It's just like Bucky and just like. Damn, so it's like it makes sense. So people are hating him like, oh, you're trying to give me this great value, Captain America, and that's what he is, and that's why he in, in turn Yeah, he low key look kind of ugly. Do his own thing. Well, I think his 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 actual out uh, costume is cool. The the cow on his head though, I don't like it because it just doesn't it's not for his face. And you know he's um he's um Goldie Hawn and um Kurt Russell's son. What? Wyatt Russell. He he's um Kate Hudson's little brother. They play he and it's funny because his dad played Ego. What? Dad played Oh, so they, oh they, I can see it now. He do look like Kurt Russell a little bit. If you look at him, he looks just like Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn's face mask together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Nobody like and then I, I wrote, I remember it's like, I will not take any Wyatt Russell slander because he is a good actor. He played in one of my favorite episodes of Black Mirror. One of my favorite episodes, Playtest. What well, episode of Black Mirror? Playtest, where he thought that he was in a 3D reality house and it was getting weirder and weirder just to come to find out he never even made it. He died in the beginning of the episode, but it all happened in the millisecond, all episode. Oh, I probably... Was the it like first, season one, Black Mirror or something? No. One of the it recent... Season two? I think there's like four seasons of Black Mirror. It was one of the... Not the last season that just came out, the one before that. Okay, all I know, I've just seen like one season of Black Mirror. I haven't seen all of them, but it, he, he, 
Mm-hmm. He looked like he looked like he he could be like a really good potential actor, and I, I think we're going to see more of that further down the line when you start to see like a, a shift change. Him turning it. Okay. Oh, he already at the end of the second episode, I was already like, "Here he come, U.S. agent." Because U.S. agent is yeah. like, he's not good, but he's not bad. He was a bad Captain America, mm-hmm. but he's not a bad guy. Like what he stands for isn't bad. It's just I'm not doing it as clean cut. It's like Black Knight and Arkham Knight. I mean, yeah, it's just like I get what you're saying. Like it's like Nightwing and Red Hood. Right. It's like we both want to capture the like, bad guys, but. I want to kill them, and you want to get them to go to jail. We both yeah. want things. And event like right now, um, Jack is in the point where he's like, "I want to bring them in. Like, I'm gonna. I'm, I work for the government, and I. He's all. He's so determined to like be better than um, Chris Evans is Captain America that he's gonna probably fuck up. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait. The season's almost at, next week. We're halfway through the season already. I'm like, oh my god. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a six episode series, which I think is pretty good because a six hour movie, basically. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty good because they don't want to give like I'm glad they didn't put in too many episodes because now that would be leaving more room for um, what comes out. I don't know. She comes out in July. Black Widow. Black Widow comes out in July. Yeah, uh, she, so Loki. Loki is after. No, you know what I think it's setting up for uh, Armor Wars. Yeah, but Armor Wars don't come out till next year, though. Yeah, but that's the that's the next thing that's really coming out dealing with these like sets of characters because everything else coming out is dealing with like Loki in time anywhere, and then like Black Widow is back in time too, and then um, Spider Man. I don't think it's gonna deal with them, and then it just it moves to it like shifts to magic mm-hmm. with Spider Man and um, uh, Doctor Strange. All that's like magic stuff. So mm-hmm. once um, strong people fighting each other again, that part of the MCU is not, I think, into like armor wars because I think it's gonna go from magic to setting up Young Avengers because you see they drop a Young Avenger and everything. There's the Young Avengers. Oh, I was getting to that. Yeah, speaking I, of the Young Avengers. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people didn't catch that because a lot of people don't know. Like we, they didn't know who I Falcon. is. It's yeah. not Falcon. Like we legit have more than one Black Captain America and stuff. Like I said, you have Isaiah Bradley, uh, the old dude that showed up at the show, and Isaiah, Isaiah and Elijah. Elijah okay. Bradley is the grandson, and um, he the door right? Huh? He's supposed to be the one that opened the door for them. That was supposed to be a, a Eli, because that's what He's I thought. Patriot. Yeah, because I was thinking, I was like, oh, because I knew where they were going with it. I knew, I, I'm I gonna knew tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to tell I, you what's going to happen. Yeah. And this is a, this is this is my breakdown theory. Uh, you know, since you know Bucky went to Soldier, you know, went to the house, you know, try to get more information about the Super Soldier Serum and all that. And um, like I said, one thing that that I, I really love that it's it's very dope that Marvel picks up like issues of of what the African Americans go went through in the military like back in the day. Like that was really touching really deep and stuff. And next thing you know you see Elijah. Huh? Uh, it's still happening now, trust me. I was just there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. I think Falcon, once he get the shield back, he may be taking he may be taking mental as the as as Captain America, but I have a feeling what may happen, probably not not in the series, but later on in the future, he will pass that mantle down to Elijah Bradley. Mm-hmm. So, because you already know that the, the Falcon once he <clears throat> turns Captain America, then the Falcon is gonna be his Torres, the guy Joaquin Torres. Yeah, he's supposed to be like the sidekick of a uh, of Falcon and stuff. Oh, and then yeah. he's probably going to give him to turn into the Falcon. And then I, I, it got to happen because that's the only reason, that's the only way I can see it happening. Like, they're going to give the credit where credit is due for what I say, uh, the first Black Captain America. Like, give his credit first for what he had done for America and then passing the mantle and everything down to him 
uh, to become the Black America, to be the Black Captain America, which turns into the Patriot. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. They're going to fit him in there somewhere because every movie since, I think, um, Endgame, or every, yeah, since Endgame, no, what what was the other one? Infinity Wars, I think they dropped a nugget for, because it's like they, they grew up Cassie Lang, they let her, she didn't get dusted, so she grew up. The Tawanda and her twins, Elijah Bradley, Kate Bishop is going to be the new Hawkeye, and she has her own show. Um, America, I heard America's in Doctor Strange. And she's oh yeah, the uh, the the lady, Miss America. Yeah, Miss America. yeah. Paula Harris is the new Miss Marvel, and I know she's. Um, I think she's getting her either. She, I know she just got in. She's the main uh, antagonist she's in the show. And I know she's now getting a, a game. And then another thing I heard that people were talking about is they introduced the shock, not the shocker. Um, yeah, the shocker. No, what's his name? Miles is Miles's uncle. Yeah, he's the shocker. No, the prowler. He's the prowler. oh, the prowler. Fuck. And that's childish. Yeah, and he was just like he talked about his nephew. He brought up his nephew. So yeah. in Spider-Man movies, so they were saying like, whoa. Can they just Sony can keep that Spider Man and then they grow with the Miles Morales because Miles would be young and be coming up at that age, you know, as now, hold on Tom, now. Han- Tom Holland was when he came. Now, hold on now. Oh. you think you think Sony because anything that's related to Spider Man content is still under Sony, that's so true. yeah, so of- that that's a good. Hey, that's a good ass theory though. I can see that happening, but what, what Sony is trying to do, they're trying to build their own Spider-Man universe after uh after Tom Holland gets through with his contracts with with Marvel. Mm-hmm. But it's not not too late. Like to put what you were saying, what if they just give like Tom Holland, you know, back to Sony and negotiate terms with the Miles Morales? Black Spider Man for the MCU, where he'll have the cameos with. That would be a good ass. That would be a good ass contract idea. Because I think I don't believe Spider Man ever ran with the Young Avengers, but he would be around the same age as them. As Miles, he could. He could. Like this is this is a way for for MCU to develop like uh, 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 their own type of. New Young Avengers, which yeah, it's it's possible. I I, I believe that I did see like a, a Spider Man one or two with the Young Avengers, but it wouldn't hurt that they did, and I think that would be like a really great stepping stone in the future MCU if they passed it down. Because Miles is is was should be like a teen teenage or um, young adult age around the same age as Cassie or um, Elijah or America Chavez. So he I would mean, be around that same age yeah. to just throw that in there. But I I forgot that, you know, Sony, they did their thing with the Miles Morales um, movie. And then, then I think that there's a sequel and then they have the, the two games. So I don't know. They got a lot of. Yeah, but it, oh, like I said, like it's it wouldn't hurt. I can <laughs> really I could possibly see that in the future that Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios trying to do like a trade off between two different Spider-Mans, like, mm-hmm. hey, you do what you want with this Tom Holland, but we can build up a storyline for the Miles and yeah. then give him back to y'all. But for that shit that Sony tried to pull with Tom Holland, try to, like, get him come back to their universe, which had a huge backlash, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, my thing is this. They probably ain't going to do that because it's a potential money game for them because if you have a black superhero... On, on on television and you do it right or on a movie screen like that's a big money cash maker like prime example black panther black panther is the only solo superhero movie that went over a billion dollars than the other standalone yeah. superhero movies and there is it's top tier up there right next to the avengers so yeah and i, it's I don't think i don't think sony sony yeah. gonna try to do to, to get that money yeah, that yeah, you're probably right because I don't even know. It's does the Spider Man. Does Spider Man even show up? I haven't played the Avengers game, but does Spider Man even show up in the Avengers game? Because Spider Man has his own game. 
Remember there's Oh there's, man. Oh, yeah, man. I I got I got the Avengers game right now. Um I actually played the the Future Imperfect last night and it's going pretty good. The game? Uh huh. Spider Man is he in the game? No, see, he, here's what was supposed to happen. He was supposed to be he was supposed to be DLC only for Sony PlayStation. So really? yeah, it makes sense because anything tied to Spider-Man is straight Sony. And a lot of people was really pissed off. They're like, how in the fuck you gonna have an exclusive DLC for Sony and this game is a multi-platform game? Which, like I said, hey, it makes sense, but if anything relating to Spider-Man, if Spider-Man is supposed to have his own DLC with the Avengers video game, I don't know when that's supposed to drop. Ain't nobody dropped no trailer or no, no hints or nothing like that. But one thing I am excited for we are getting the Black Panther DLC. I, you saw I, that? Yeah. In a, a whole Wakanda, a whole Wakanda section now. Yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. And um I don't care how much it is, take my money for <laughs> Black Panther. Uh, mm. I got I, I got to I got to get my boy on that on that game and stuff like that. But yeah, anything Spider-Man related, Sony, Sony gonna make their money off of it and no nobody else. He has two really good games out right now, Spider Man, like the Miles Morales ones. And I was like, Well, are are they gonna let Peter Parker Spider Man go to the Avengers game? Or no? Nah? I never I never really thought about it until like right now. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, that was they 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 had uh concept art uh I wanna say beginning of this year or last year, that had whole concept art of Spider Man and everything. And you know how he was going to be introduced and stuff, but I think the creative director and the production company uh, of the Avengers they took a step back because it was a huge backlash going on about that, and so they took a step back from that, and then they just decided to go forward towards Black Panther. He's supposed to be coming, but he's not coming to Xbox. But that happens. Like games like Mortal Kombat have DLC specific uh platform specific for DLC all the time. Like if yeah. you have this console you, you get this character. If you have this console, you get this character. Yeah. Exclusive. It's it's not uncommon. No, it's not. It but is... I could would be mad, but given what's the going on, I figured as much, really. Yeah. It's it's just it's just Spider Man is just overall popular character in mm-hmm. in superhero comic books history and stuff. Like, if you're gonna have them with one, you gotta have them with all of them. But you know, companies exclusive. We all know how that shit works. It, it is what it is. Either you buy the system or you just take the L's, just enjoy the game. Either way. Mm-hmm. Um, what? Yeah. yeah. So, what are your thoughts of, on on that text message that? That girl from Flag Smash. Her name is Kari, by the way. Yeah, uh, um, I heard that it's supposed to be the not the taskmaster, the um power broker. Power broker, and I think you, if you watch the credits, because I saw in the last episode, I actually watched the pictures that flashed in the credits because I went back and watched like a video on the first one, and they were like, if you look through all the pictures they show when they show people's names, because you know they have background images going on, you see Isaiah mm-hmm. Bradley file medical record. If you pause it, you can read that he was born on this year when he was injected and all that stuff. So when I went did it this time on one of the little slides that they show it it has the name power broker like spray painted uh, across a brick wall so we're thinking that the power broker broker is supposedly the person that gives most of the people the powers in the comic books Mm -hmm. saying that since they stole super serum soldier super soldier serum that they think (laughs) that stole it from power broker and the power broker so that they're trying to make everybody superpower so that nobody is is special kind of yeah. like some like syndrome from incredibles and basically yeah. he's like he, i guess he sells it like he makes people powerful for a price and they stole it from him so i i guess he's going to be someone but they they think that the power broker is secretly someone we already met yeah that's what they were saying they're saying like what if simo is the power broker 
or what you call it. Because one, one thing, one thing that the MCU, Marvel Studios, what they'll do, they'll they'll put an uh, extra character all into one person in a show or a movie. Right. You know? and like the, the, uh, Power Brokers is his own complete separate entity, but this yeah. person. This power broker is supposedly someone we already know. I don't think it's Zemo because when you think about what Zemo was, his plan was, he didn't want any more superheroes. He wanted yeah. everyone normal. So why would he in turn make more superheroes? So I feel like Zemo is going to be working against these people. But I feel like My, the big, big bad is definitely power broker overall. Yeah. You see, I see the thing is, I don't know because like MCU've done a great job of. Showing the showing us all these characters that we're supposed to see is supposed to get of all these hints like the, the like the Grim Reaper and Mephisto and mm-hmm. you know all these all these hints that we saw like in WandaVision. So my money's I, on I, huh? he, my money's on Thaddeus. He makes an appearance, a small appearance in almost every movie, but we, he hasn't been the movie since mm-hmm. the Hulk. Because he's been playing Thaddeus Ross since the original Incredible Hawks. So technically the beginning of the MCU before, you know, Iron Man. And, um... Yeah, he I, went way back. I don't remember that. Been evil. Like, where's Thunderbolt Ross? Where's the Thunderbolts? Where's Red Hulk? When does he turn evil? So I think he's going to use his own super... He's the power broker, I think. He's going to in turn use his own serum that he tried to perfect because he's been trying to make this the reason why he has the serum let me this is my theory of him being the power broker the reason why he has the serum is because ever since bruce banner you know made the serum um they made they basically he got it like a, a different form of the super soldier serum and he's an incredible hulk he was trying to mimic that i think yeah he in turn injects himself with the serum that he's like, you stole my shit. And when he gets it back, he's going to talk to the Red Hulk, I believe. I yeah, think I was... I was... And I think that's going to... I think that's... He's going to... I really want a Red Hulk. I really... We got like... We're smart, going to Red Hulk. We got Smart Hulk now. And I don't, I don't care about that. So I was excited to see the Hulk on Sakaar because I was like, Planet Hulk. Yes. Yeah. And then, no. Well, we got the Red Hulk. I think I think we're gonna see a, a more hinted Red Hulk when Black Widow comes out. You know, because you know, um, Agent, well, not Agent Ross. Uh, what's what's that old dude name? Is guy a dog? He's huh? Who? The old, the old dude that was uh that was in Civil War. You know, they were telling them about the plans what the government wants them to do. What's his name? That's Thaddeus Ross. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah, Brown. I forgot his name back there. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. I feel like he is the person that is going to be the person that was someone we already know is the power broker. Because ever, yeah. been, ever since he was General Ross in The Incredible Hulk, he has since moved up in the ranks to now he's like in tr- control of the Avengers. I, I never knew the nigga first I, name was Daddy. Because <laughs> you always know him as Thunderbolt Ross. Daddy, General Daddy is yeah. Ross. So I'm thinking he's the power broker and he was trying to control, trying to make new serum so that he can make superheroes that he could control because the, the, half of his superheroes don't want to listen to him. Yeah. So I think he was making his own. They found out. They, it got stolen somehow. And now he's trying to get it back. And I think when he realizes that he can't get it back, he's like, well, let me take some. So I'll get it back myself. Boom. He's the Red Hulk. Because Thaddeus mm-hmm. Roth is the Red Hulk in the comics. He's I Betty Roth. That name was Thaddeus. You got a black name. Well, um. This is a black name. Yeah, so Thaddeus? I met a black Thaddeus. Really? Nope. Yeah, I met like a couple of daddies that were black and stuff. I ain't knew, I ain't never seen a white daddies. But uh, not, nothing to be racial profile anyway. But uh, let's get let, let me get back to this theory. Uh, I had the exact same theory, mm-hmm. just like you said. Uh, that's pretty much I had the mindset of. Um, one thing is I forgot the nigga name was daddies. I guess uh, <laughs> my and my other 
theory that people were hinting towards is U.S. agent. What if this U.S. agent is the one that's after the flag smashers and trying to get the serum and everything back, you know? Uh, powers. And in the book, in the comics, I believe he got his powers from the power broker. Because right now he's just a normal human being. He's like Sam. Sam has a suit, but he doesn't have powers. And then don't 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 U.S. agent and uh, the Red Hulk work together in the Thunderbolts. And the crazy part is, um, they're both antiheroes. Like they're not bad guys. And I don't. And even the Flag Smasher in the comic books isn't a bad guy. That's why I know that the main bad guy in this in this um, season or this series is not the Flag Smashers. And I don't think it's Zemo either. They well, want you. Well, they want you to think it's Zemo that was texting her. And then they lead into that scene of he was like, I got to go talk to Zemo. But mm-hmm. I know it. They're trying to throw you off. They're trying to throw off people who are who don't know. Like, they're just watching the show because they know MCU. But mm-hmm. I don't, they're not me off. Not, not me. Not Miss Marvel. Not Captain Marvel over here. They're not talking. Mm-hmm. They're talking like the Flag Smashers are the bad guys when they're just refugees. That's like saying, like. That's all you see, yeah. People crossing the border to get a better life in America are the bad guys. No, I'm just trying to better myself. Like I don't, I don't want to hurt anyone. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. What is? Because they're who are they hurt? Who are they hurting? Mm-hmm. I don't know. From from what from what I'm seeing, this could be like a a potential potential build up for the Thunderbolts when when you look at it because you got. To your theory, got you know General Ross mm-hmm. possibly could be working together with U.S. Agent, and then Simo. Well, technically, Ross is working with U.S. Agent because right now he's Captain America under the government, so he works like under Thaddeus. You know what I mean? Because there is no more Shield. You know what I mean? So okay, the- you got Sword. Yeah. So the government is pretty much made Captain America and the government is Thaddeus Ross. Like I'm pretty sure they're, they know they're working together in cahoots right now, but it, you think that what you're saying sounds cool. I mean, that's the only way I can see it because like I said, this, the, the, the Falcon and the winter soldier should be like an introduction of the Thunderbolts, like teaming up together. Like now you start to see the, the flash mashers, plural, U.S. agent, Battlestar. Um, mm. <laughs> speaking of, I don't know if people really go, I don't know, I don't think people really like Battlestar because I think, you know, especially for us black folks, we're getting tired of being like the black sidekick. Yeah. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> so, now, Falcon and Winter Soldier is a little bit different. They just really teammates. Ain't nobody like the the, the sidekick. And then but Erica and Falcon black friend iron man iron patriot yeah uh, yeah and they low-key they low-key try to do the same thing to to falcon too it's like you know i would just love to have count falcon's wingman and stuff like that you son of a bitch so you want two black sidekicks that's what he was like hey fuck you how you want how you gonna have you already got your own side black sidekick you got your own wingman get the fuck out of my face so one doesn't and can't fly. This one's just a regular black guy. <laughs> exactly. He's swinging the shit, but he's supposed to. He's supposed to get injected with the super solar syndrome too. So back to what I'm trying to say. Okay, Ross, U.S. agent, Simo. Simo's part of the Thunderbolts. So I'm thinking that probably like General Ross is going to convince him to be part of the Thunderbolts because he's in there. Um, what's it, Ross and, and, and Battlestar? And then I got a feeling that 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 girl Kari, you know, I think everybody else is gonna die, and she's gonna be so the it's... only one flag smasher. Yeah, the flag smasher. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I think she's gonna turn. I think she's just gonna turn into the flag smasher, and they all gonna be working together. Because what they started off with, they said that we have eight super soldiers. They were fighting one yeah. sacrifice at the end of the episode, and if they keep yeah. sacrificing to save her, she's going to be the only one left. Yeah, all of them not going to make it. Mm-mm. All of them not going to make we it. Don't, we don't know anybody's name except for hers. No, no, and it's tying so much into her 
like on, on what she's doing, which I need to find out what's her real name is because she's a really great actor, by the way. She always plays those serious like roles. Like she was in Star Wars. Yeah, there you go. She was in Star Wars in that Han Solo movie. And she's a, like a legit cute badass. Like she's very cute. And she's a badass. Two last names. Oh, I can't think of it right now. Damn. It's gonna come to me. It's gonna come to me in the middle of you talking. I'll be like, ah! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Always. But you know, we we starting to see the change, you know, already of the US Asian stuff. Like, you know, he already talking shit. Don't like, you know, you if you ever come, if I ever see you, you better stay the hell out of my way. Man, fuck you. Ain't nobody starting you, US Asian. You jumped um, in on Huh? He it was like you jumped in on our fight. I didn't tell you to bail me out of jail. Exactly. And he already like you see he changed he changed quick like he was all humble and everything first at this high school and shit, and now he over there talking like, well, well, who bought it out of jail? <laughs> me. me, I have yeah. the. Other. And I, uh, you can he, you can you can let go of uh, Winter Soldier of all his things because we we're gonna need him. He's he was doing like a I'm the boss so follow me and then he were like I don't give a fuck we ran away from the entire country for years, what? We were on the run for years. We don't care about your country. I mean, they care about the country, but not to your country. And I, which character? Which character do you feel the most for in Falcon and the Winter Soldier show? Because mine's mine's is Bucky. Mine's is mine's is yeah, Winter Soldier man. Definitely, because definitely, huh? he, definitely, yeah. I the situation could change for Sam anytime. But yeah, um, I. I know that I killed Iron Man's parents. I'm this this old man's friend. I can't even tell him I killed your son. Like that's so sad. Mm. That's so sad. I can't even go on dates. I can't even buy furniture. I'm so traumatized. The it's just, dude, sad. the dude said he was most happy was at Wakanda, mm-hmm. which he was the White Wolf. You know, like the dude literally found peace and solitude. Like I said, we're kind of going to treat you nice, man. Just go to Wakanda and be around some black folks and everything. We're going we gonna to treat you good, man. <laughs> so, it's it was kind of... I feel I feel a lot for him, like, you know, especially that, that shield and stuff. Like, I like how they... Exp- he is, you know, the, the counselor were trying to get expressed to, like, how they feel and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm kind of like... I'm kind of like on Bucky's side. Bucky you know, died. Like, Bucky died, originally died. Using the shield, yeah, he on off of that train. He only didn't die outright because he was holding the vibranium shield when he was shot off that train. Mm-hmm. But it was like, that fucking shield saved my life, bro? I mean, yeah, it made me turn into the Winter Soldier, but I could have been dead, dead. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, kind of. Like, he didn't consult with nobody. That was kind of fucked up. That was kind of fucked up. Because if that was the case, you could have just ha- kept it. I mean, because, I mean, it, it feels like I get what Falcon is doing. Like, this shield means so much. Mm-hmm. It done so much than what I've done. Like, the person behind the shield, it's like it's like hearing the name of, of Michael Jordan. You know, you, like, you're you wearing the shoes and stuff. Like, that's, that's a lot to carry and stuff. Like, I'd just rather just to have it put up and just save it for when the time is right. But come but on, Falcon. We, we're talking about... The way that, like, um, Bucky and even... Um, what's his... Rhodey? The way that they're thinking about it, they're thinking... They're looking at the shield like it's... Me, me, no, me, 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 oh, my God. Me, no, me, <laughs> Thor's hammer. I cannot say it right now. Me, no, me, no, yeah. Oh, my God. I can't even think of it. I can't... I can I can I can say it either. Uh, Mjolnir, Mjolnir, Mj- Mjolnir. There we go. They they think yeah. of that kind of like that when 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 you, someone gives it to you. Like if only only Thor knew that Captain America could pick up his hammer. You know what I mean? But it's like yeah. so. So when he gave it to Sammy, knew it was that he thinks that no one else should be worthy to pick it up. So why do you even? But until you're ready to use it, but don't. I if just because I can't. And just because I'm not ready to use Munonir, I shouldn't put it in a in a museum. 
or give it to the government because come on now, like Falcon, you know better to trust the damn government with, with anything. You know, um, especially dealing with, you know, General Ross, like anything that's anything that they can put their name on and become US government property, they they would use it. And I don't blame Bucky for being upset with Falcon. Like, dude, we all get what you're trying to do, right? Like he all just said what I was trying to do, right? No, fuck that, you damn dumbass. Like okay. if you if you want to hold on to the shield and wait for whoever belongs to it and think that the time is right, then let it be your decision. Don't let it be no fucking government decision. Thank you. The, the government could put a, re- a metal replica up in there and no one's going to know the difference. Why would you give them the real fucking shield? And then you got to think about this. Before they blipped for five years, uh, Sam was a criminal. Yep. So that, the government and the and Captain America's shield it ain't the first place I'm going. Hello. I do. Why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> so, can y'all just accept for the fact that I was trying to do the right thing? We get that. It just it was fucking dumb. If anything, notice they don't know what America is. Huh? They never said what happened to Captain America. Oh, they you know they ain't gonna say that. They didn't. He didn't. He. Well, he obviously drove to that spot because he knew they were going to be there because it, it. he came back from the past and he knew what day they were there where they were at. But, mm-hmm. you know, got up and left. He wasn't, didn't look like he was on his deathbed. He looked like he was doing fine. Yeah, he was, like, well, he just, he just he, aged like that black old dude. He aged just like Isaiah Bradley. He, Isaiah's doing just fine. He still has super strength. Yep. And, Steve's was better than, Steve's serum was better than Isaiah's. No one's was more compatible than Steve. Just like no one could get out after they tried so many times and no one else could do until um, they used his own DNA to make his daughter. No one else could do Wolverine. They did that. So they tried that that shit so many times with other people and it was a catastrophe. And they even tried to do it with Deadpool, but Deadpool had turned mutated him. Yeah. So it's just like the serum only works with who it works with. So even though Isaiah is still strong. Someone else who survived it could probably not be strong anymore. But it's yeah. still age. But I'm glad Isaiah's still strong. I was like, yes. Oh, yeah. Ass, oh, because yeah. that, him going, being experimented on during that time goes with, like, real World War II. Like, black people were really being experimented on. So it makes sense that they accidentally, in the comic book land, made a black superhero. Because they, they we were the first people to try gas masks. To see if they worked, so we was getting all kind of gassed, mm-hmm. trying vaccines because you know you need vaccines to go overseas. They were they were giving all kind of people shit, and it was just oh, yeah. I, I was like, that, that's cool that they flipped it around and said, Wally, they did all this to us. You got a good, you got someone who cared enough to still want to fight for the country after the country gave you some bullshit. Mm-hmm. I wish the military would have yeah. acted superpowers. All the shit they shot up in me. Yeah, yeah, man. So, I think that would do about Falcon and Winter Soldier. Now mm-hmm. let's let's jump on let's jump on other great and dumb ideas. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about let's talk about Justice League real quick. Um, I, mean, I hope I'm not about everything else. You know, I ain't really gonna talk about Suicide Squad. I mean, I mean, we can, but. I don't know really much about the 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 feelings that's part of the Suicide Squad. All I know it's a great cast. It's directed by James Gunn, and James Gunn gonna do that. James it's Gunn got just, a, here, James Gunn got um, a spinoff series for John Cena's. Um, yeah, Peacemaker. Peacemaker. So now they they liked what that he did so well with the movie because the movie's already done. So they they say they liked the yeah. movie. So well, that they, they he's already writing the script for the series to continue off with, so you know Peacemaker's not going to die. But apparently, yeah. in Suicide Squad, you should you should uh, expect um, deaths of main characters, just like how they shot mm-hmm. the game um, out of the sky in the first five minutes. I was like, well, what, the, what was the point of that? Yep, yep. So, like I said, if you go through the trailer and break it down, you realize like. The, the cast that you see, like, in the beginning is getting less and less. So you're going to see some people dying off. From the beginning, from the beginning of that, yeah. I, yeah. Because um, th- the only people that came back for the last one was Captain Boomerang's Jai Courtney and Harley Quinn 
and then Ric Flair. And then, mm. of course, Amanda Waller or whatever, but yeah. everyone is completely new. But nobody died at the end of the last movie. No, but what they're saying is just like, it's like the Suicide Squad is supposed to be like the, like a reboot or something like that. That's why they're not calling it Suicide Squad 2. Like they, it's just basically like, like another redo or something, something else that they're calling it. So Hopefully better so that we can run continuity from this new one and not that old one. Because like yeah. the Joker, I guess, because I don't. That's what that's what the question I wanted to ask you. So Suicide Squad sequel is basically the Harley Quinn movie, right? It continues right after that. We, I don't even know. I've never seen it. I never seen it. But the Harley Quinn so the I seen Suicide Squad, but apparently um the Harley Quinn um Birds of Prey movie is supposed to be fo- like directly following Suicide Squad. And she breaks up with the Joker kind of in Suicide Squad. And then in that movie, she like completely breaks up with them because she still, she starts the movie with her hair from Suicide Squad. And then that's, she cuts yeah. it short. But then in the other, in the new movie, I it does, is Birds of, because Birds of Prey counted with the Suicide Squad movie. But yeah. this movie, they're trying to reboot Suicide Squad. So it's like, do we, is this falling in between Harley Quinn's movie and, the new Suicide Squad, or do I not? Do I need to go back and watch that movie? Because oh, I never, you know. Or I don't. I have no idea. Like I don't know. I, I've never seen it. And I don't really don't have no interest in seeing it for some reason. I just don't. I don't have no interest in seeing it either. Like I said, I don't really give a damn because Birds of the Prey was really not talked about a lot. A lot of people weren't feeling it. So, do they bring Poison Ivy, Catwoman, and Harley Quinn together in a movie? I don't. I don't care about the birds of the prey. Like, I don't want to see the canary if you're not going to have um, Green Arrow. You know exactly. What I, mean? I don't care. I don't want to see uh, what's her name. Um, the cop, like the Montoya. I don't care. I just don't care about these. Th- these people are like side character missions in Batman games. Exactly. It's just. Like, I mean, it's the point in the Batman game where she's in the Batman game. She, they're be- these are basically side missions that you do to go collect stuff to build new armor. You know what I mean? Characters we don't care that's, about. That's one thing. That's one thing that I hate. What one of the brothers are doing, like they so focus on trying to build a continuity with these side characters, but we haven't built a continuity with the main characters y'all have in DC right now. Like this Birds of a Prey movie really was a waste of money. That funding could have went towards like the Thank next. You. Cyborg. We could have fixed the Snyder Cut years ago. We could have just you paused know, the movie. We could have just paused the movie until he was ready. You, I would. You that. know, Zack Snyder in recent interviews said if they had kept going mm-hmm. with my own with my own Justice League, Justice right. League three would have been out by now in two thousand twenty one, or mm-hmm. or probably. A- 22. Yeah. Because they he said been- He said uh, it, it said the Justice League 3 was supposed to be out by now or probably like later on in the year or next year. Depends on how things go. He has storyboards for the next three. He had storyboards done up for the next three movies already. So if there's like, it's it's like public knowledge what was going to happen. Like Lois's Lane's baby was supposed to be, um, and they hinted at it in the movie, and Lois's Lane's baby was supposed to be um, Batman's. And then at the end of that movie, Batman was really going to sacrifice himself. That's what at the end of Justice League three, when they finally caught back up to it, all of that. And Joker yeah. saying, um, "How many times I do we got to go through before you actually sacrifice yourself? You keep letting everyone else die." And then he finally lets you know he finally sacrifices himself. And Wonder Woman, um, Aquaman were really supposed to die for real. Like when we seen those visions, like that was supposed to be yeah. real. I'm glad they changed the way Steppenwolf looked. Yeah. Original he movies. looks serious besides looking like all cartoony and stuff. But yeah, oh. it's just so many new mm-hmm. new recent news coming out from Zack Snyder and these uh, other di- uh, other different interviews about how Justice League and everything's supposed to turn out. So basically, Justice League 2, Justice League 2 is supposed to be the nightmare version of of the multiple scenes that we kept seeing in, uh, in, in Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League. It was like and those... Batman- 
Alt- man, that was supposed to tie because Zack Snyder did that movie. That was supposed to tie into the Flash. In his gear, we yep. see Snyder cut. Yeah. Think because Bruce told him to say Lois is the key, but he but remember he when he came in he said it's when he first came into the dream he was like it's too early, and then he he told Batman that's where he fucked because right now there's three there's three timelines. Yeah, there's it's a, three different timelines. Timeline where we see that. Um, Flash, all of this happened like that, and Flash went back the first time to say, Lo, "Don't let her die" or something like that, or "Lois is the key." But he yeah. he went to the wrong point in time because Batman didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. And then then the timeline that's happening in Blackman versus Superman that goes into the Justice League, and then the timeline we see at the end of um, the Nightmare thing because supposedly in between that movie and the Nightmare scene, they've already tried that. They tried it already. Yeah. Because he said, how many fucking, how many timelines do we have to go through before you just die? Like, it's obviously you, you need to, you're the key. He's like, it's like if Tony knew that the answer was he had to sacrifice himself at the end of Endgame and he was trying to do everything to not do that. And and even though Dr. Strange said, there's only one option. You have to die. Just do die. Sorry, just die. So basically, just dies. And I, I really want, and this is why I was really sad about the Zack Snyder thing, because I really want an Injustice storyline of some sort. Like, Superman could eventually come back, because in the end of Injustice 2, you see Superman is still fucking evil. Depending yeah, on what I mean, we all it, did. Like, he said, like, Justice League 3 was supposed to be the potential sequel for Man of Steel. Like, you're going to see <laughs> the buildup of Superman, his own, his own way, his own type of storyline at first. And then at the end of Justice League 3, then you're going to see a combination of Justice League coming back, getting together, whooping dark size ass and stuff like that. <clears throat> Captain America movie, but everyone's there. Captain exactly. America. And I, I, I like that he finally, we got to finally see, because it's been a lot of speculation um, that the general, what's his name, the black guy with the really cute booty chin, um, the general. <laughs> you call him Martian Manhunter. Yeah, the Batman from, from Batman versus Superman. A lot of people thought that he was like Martian Manhunter, and I was like, I don't get it. But then, like, he he showed up in Batman versus, sense. and he kept being like just there, and just he just kept just be. It's like Thunder, like the, what Thunderbolt Ross is. He's like mm. a side that he's he's reoccurrently there, but you don't think to think of it as him. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's- Thunderbolt Ross is, is the power broker. So when he finally showed up, because the same actor played Martian Manhunter in like he he was the one dressed up in Martian Manhunter. And, and I was he's like perfect. He's a perfect Martian Manhunter. Like his voice really just matches with the character. Martian Manhunter's voice is always black. So I was like, I'm glad it was yeah. black. I'm glad it was a black. And you know what's crazy? Isaiah what? Brown played Martian Manhunter. The, the 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 same character that played Martian Manhunter is Isaiah Bradley in Fountain Dale and Soldier. Wow, I ain't know that. Listen to his voice; you can hear it if you listen to it. You you can hear. It. I'm like, oh shit. Well, Marvel got him now. Marvel got him as the first black Captain America. Yeah, it's just everything right now. I have a question. So, say DC continues to like. Um, you know, expand their universe or whatever and continue, say not, maybe something similar to what Snyder um, had in mind and just d- goes forward with the stories. Do you think they're going to gonna continue with the same actors? Because Ben Affleck is not Batman. He, I don't know if Henry Cavill said anything about being done with Superman. We, we obviously know Wonder Woman has had her own successful franchise, same with Aquaman. Cyborg's person, Ray Fisher, ever since that Josh Whedon took over. I don't even know if he wants to be an actor anymore. <laughs> it, ruined, it, ruined, it ruined it for him because Josh Whedon, when Josh Whedon came in and took over, like, it ruined for him. Like, here's the projects that are further going along now, and it does not have shit to do with Justice League at all. Like you got Static Shot that's that's being produced and directed by Michael B. Jordan, so that's a good sign. Then you got the new Batman, you know the Homeboy from Twilight. Then you got this other project. Batman huh? and think of the Batman that's coming out, like we did with the Joker, the movie that came out. So it's his own separate identity, right? Well, 
they they're saying they're going to tie that universe like they they're going to try to tie the universe somewhere in somebody's movie and it's probably going to be the flashpoint movie because mm-hmm. like in the, they're working up a universe where like marvel is like multiple different versions of batman and and all these other characters and stuff all I mean, I know batman's been the most casted superhero ever yeah, I know, Batman, but they're Spider Man's. There's been more Batman's than Superman. There's been more Batman's than any other character. So I mean, if people all can just I know, changing all the time, then it shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be that hard. All I know, if they weren't so focused on making everything PG thirteen and made it rated R because the Zack Snyder cut is rated R, like his version of Justice League could have had tied two F words. Uh, you no, know, two fucks made the movie rated r two fucks that's it i thought it was i thought it was the the killing and stuff no. like the blood and stuff. It, because if they had one if they would have took out one of those fucks then it would have still been pg-13 because he said right. i'll kill you to the joker and then cyborg said who fuck gives the, a fuck gives a fuck, oh, yeah, fuck. fuck yeah fuck the world and then that and then it was done it was automatically rated r yeah so, but if they had the, kept it once in if they had kept it rated R, then their universe could have, or Zack Snyder's version could have had, got into continuity along with Batman and uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Because now, now you've created like a, a, a rated R dark universe that could have done tied into it and Wait, put all that in Flashpoint universe. It made sense. They, I don't know why they try to run DC like that because DC has always been a darker storyline. Like Marvel's always been the happy go lucky, and then DC has always been gritty because Batman has always got his has been gritty. Superman, yeah. that was such a tragic dark hole storyline and comic books. Yeah, like they always they've been grittier. Like the Killing Joke. Hello, turn that shit into a movie. How about that? They're not. They're not. <laughs> Now we can't have him shooting her and raping her, and then she having sex with Batman, and, and yeah, I guess not. Like turn the yeah. Arkham to Batman. I could see Robert Pattinson because people think of Robert Pattinson and they think of Twilight, and they don't like think of him as a good actor. But he's not that bad of an actor. But I could see not. He, I could see him doing being the Batman that turns into the Arkham series. Like anything is possible at this point. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people thought. Ben Affleck wasn't going to be a great Batman either. Like they thought he was going to be horrible, but Ben Affleck wrong because Ben Affleck is old already. So we automatically started. Ben Affleck's Batman has been Batman for twenty years. When we meet, when we meet in Justice League, he said he had been Batman for twenty years. Yeah. So it's like we can only do so much with Ben Affleck Batman to begin with, because he's already but he bad. He he played. He played a good ass Batman, in my opinion. Like he he was a Batman without having to build up a storyline a whole bunch of times. We got the twenty years Batman that just doesn't give a fuck. Like he literally like he kills a couple of people at Justice League in that Batman vs Superman movie, and cool. now, like that's yeah. Batman. Yeah, he's yeah. a dark. He's the dark. Uh, he's the Dark Knight Returns Batman. Mm-hmm. I don't mind. I didn't. I didn't mind. The casting, let me tell you the only problem, of the only casting problem I had in the entire movie, and people are going to kill me for this, people are going to get in my ass, Jason Momoa, I love Jason Momoa, he's fucking sexy, I would love to see him underwater all day, but him being casted as Arthur, I just did not see it, I was just like, huh? Because every time you see Arthur Curry, he's never that cool guy, and even when you see him in um, the Injustice League storyline, he's just a... I don't want to say Joe American because he's not really like American. He's well half American, but you know what I'm saying. Like he's always that blonde cut. Just he's like Superman with blonde hair. Yeah. And so I was just like, I don't see it. I don't see Cal Drogo. Be and then his contacts threw me off. And mm-hmm. then fix it with the blonde tipped hair. I just wasn't. I just didn't it didn't see. really match. It really didn't match the the Aquaman that we actually grew oh. up in and look. Playing him, he was cool. I think the Flash <laughs> did a good job. The Flash because the Flash is always that goofy. Like, hey guys, hey, hi. 
like he's like Batman. Yeah. Charlie. And I thought they did it good. Um, it was cool. I love Gal Gadot and as a woman. So I wonder if as if they continue with Wonder Woman, they're uh oh, what you see? Oh no, this is just Stephanie coming out. <laughs> oh, I wonder mm-hmm. if with Wonder Woman because where it was it was eighty four in the last one or whatever. Yeah. Um, are they going to um, like eventually catch up to when she does Batman vs Superman in the timeline, or are they just gonna? I have no clue. They just gonna come. Give I don't know, and Please. like I said, the the 1984 version. I don't know, and I don't care. It, it ruined it for me for to to be hyped about Wonder Woman three. You didn't like it. I thought we talked about it. I did not like Wonder Woman 1984 because, like the the fight scenes was ass, and the the way how they try to make everything like emotional to the point like did not make any sense at all. Um. <laughs> I'm very biased. She's my favorite. I call myself an Amazon. You know, I'm big. I'm a big. I mean, I Amazon. love. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I love Wonder Woman for for who she is. I love the comic book. Like, like the, the best Wonder Woman. Wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I do admit that it was the the ending was very forced and rushed, and the fight scenes were anticlimactic. Exactly. And I don't like the last 30 minutes of the movie. I didn't like the whole last hour of the movie. I mean, because I really liked I really liked the plot, how they were setting it up. Like with the little girl, you can, you know, you got the little Wonder Woman, you know, trying to cheat her way through, but I like the meaning of, of that you can't cheat of the movie. Like you can't cheat your way through life. You know, that was a great way how to plot it out throughout the whole thing. It's just like whoever's part of the drawing board, like for homeboy to come back in a different person's body, like why he could just that like was, but after a while of it happening on the screen, like ten minutes of it, like I forgot because it was just it was just Steve Rogers face. So I forgot. And then I was in. I was in. I was filling the fantasy. And then once the thirty at the end, the thirty minutes, you know, towards the end of the movie, and he he goes back. And then I remembered, like, oh shit, that's not even really Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, was- like he told, like he told, like he told Diane, like, what about this dude's body? I mean, like this dude got a life. Like I can't be in this dude's body. You know, we'll like- take it. Right. We'll, we'll 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 deal with that later. And then after we like got over how he came back and then jumped into her like going overseas we went overseas together and figured out the stuff i was still kind of into the fa- i was into the fantasy but can we forget about this movie i know you hate it jump speaking of her jump into the first 30 minutes of the snyder cut how they did her scene justice everything about wonder woman in the sack snyder cut was pure justice like that is the wonder woman that we wanted. Like, that's yep. the Wonder Woman that we wanted to see. Like I said, we're not saying, I mean, me, for me as growing up watching Wonder Woman, I'm not saying she's a horrible character. I'm not saying the actor, she's a, I'm not saying she's a horrible actor or nothing like that. It's just a fact, like, how well, they were setting it. Which is the, it? The material she was given, she was probably looking like, why would Wonder Woman do that, reading that? Yeah, like, you gotta look, you gotta. You got a le- legit dope actor and legit dope Wonder Woman with with some legit dope ass characters. It's just that material that we was given for Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four, and then for her to finally be in a suit and all that kind of stuff. Everything that we was given was anticlimactic. Yes, it was. yes, it was yep. anti, especially for her and Cheetah. Like yeah. the 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 the. the Seeing that we was watching with Wonder Woman and Justice League, and then you get the Justice Woman in 1984, like, that action scene, we needed that. Mm-hmm. We needed that Wonder Woman in 1984 mm-hmm. versus Cheetah. And the crazy part is, if that Zack Snyder cut would have originally come out when it was supposed to, that probably would have in turn um, turned the the tables of, like, completely changed how the first two Wonder Womans were filmed. Of course. Because she would have had, like, because I mean, granted, she was new to using. Because you know, she's strong on Themyscira, but she's like fucking strong in Man's World. 
You know what yes. I mean? So she yes. was like, dang, I'm strong in the first Wonder Woman. I, she, I understood that. And then in 1984, I guess, because, you know, they, they're like immortal. They don't like really die or they age really, really slow. So basically in 1984, she was probably like a teenager. So that's how she barely learned to fly and use her jet and all that shit. And it was cool to see her coming into her powers, but it could have been done a little differently. Like how had that Zack Snyder showed him like, this is how you want her to fight. Then the mm-hmm. cheetah fight could have been different because she was whooping in, in, in the Josh Whedon video um, version. It, the, the Stephen Wolf fights were like, okay. But in Zack Snyder's, the way that they had Wonder Woman kicking his ass and Aquaman did a lot more too. They, yeah. they, that Aquaman is is actually useful outside of water because he was fucking mm-hmm. him up. So they were really like sh- they really did a good job showing these people showing that these people are superheroes instead of just showing like she's a little bit strong. No man, the the Flash when Flash went back in time oh my on God. the sex out of cut like you, everybody everybody when he was like Barry go Barry go I'm ready and Barry was shouting like. Get up, please get up, please. Mm-hmm. I was like, run fast, please fix it. Yeah, we all I felt that early. I was like, yes, I didn't think we were gonna see him time travel. I was like, exactly. he, gonna, he gonna time travel. He time travels so fast that he pushed their intestines back into their body. He watched them re-centigrate because they disintegrated it because the bo- mother box killed him and Superman. Yeah. He watched their bones come back into... The, he ran so fast that as he was slowing down, he was finally stopped three miles later because he ran so fast. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, we all... Everybody felt this is the flash that we was waiting to see in this cut. We because wanted to see like the, 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 the potential mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. next Flash movie and the next DC movies, what's going to happen... Like, because Flash is going to be the one that's going to be introducing all this multiverse Mm -hmm. for all these other superheroes. Like, dude, like, I'm telling you, Zack Snyder Cut, if it had came out, it would have been a total, like you said, it would have been a totally different Wonder Woman 1984. It would have been a totally different Aquaman because it it led up in building the scenes for multiple different heroes for their own potential standalone movies. Did you notice that they gave Mira a, 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 a English accent, which was seemed better, but in Aquaman, <laughs> American accent, it just seems like weird. Well, she's she's irrelevant now because she's no longer part of the Aquaman series. I heard, I heard and I fingers crossed because fuck her for fucking up Johnny Depp's career. Yeah, she's it, gone. Bitch, you chopped off his fucking finger. Got him fired from Pirates of the Caribbean. Got him fired from a Harry Potter franchise. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Bitch, fuck you. Anyways, that's nor here. That's neither here nor there. But I heard that they've gotten the petition so big that they're thinking about that. I heard that she got fired because not because of that, but I think that the, that Warner Brothers might was probably trying to use a different reason to let her go. But I heard she gained too much weight in between interim of um, filming that she didn't meet the, her contract requirements. So in turn, they're trying to get Emily Clark. And you know Emily Clark, Amelia Clark, I mean, it's Cersei. I mean, not Cersei, it's Daenerys. So that will, re- that will in turn, reunite Cal Drogo and Daenerys from Game of Thrones. Because, you know, in Game of Thrones, he was in Game of Thrones. Did you watch Game of Thrones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, are you talking about that, that, uh, that did- white hair chick? Daenerys Targaryen. Oh my goodness! I loved her. her. I loved her until the last season. I loved her. Yes, actually, I loved her until she played um, Sarah Connor. Oh Which, my gosh, she did play Sarah Connor. That was her fault. I feel like the movie, her acting was good. It was just like the storyline and where they chose to go with that was like. You talk about Terminator Genesis. Yeah. Oh Shout man, to- I don't even want to talk about that. It wasn't her that wasn't her fault, but she was she did she's a good actress. I just feel like the material that she be, she be given that she's given is bad because she did a good job acting the all of Game of Thrones, but she did read her script and the script was stupid, so we can't hate her for that. You know what I mean? Of course. I, I mean, like 
if they replace, if they end up replacing um, Amber Heard, I really hope that they bring Amelia Clark because Amelia Clark, their chemistry together as Aquaman, and they're already going to be love interests, and they're already like besties because you know they they they're really close. Mm-hmm. So I would love that because yeah, I would love to see that too. I could see that. Jason Momoa has gone on on record uh, on plenty of times, in multiple interviews. I said after he, he was let go from Game of Thrones, after his character arc ended, he couldn't find any work because they just kept casting him as like grunting strongmen with no one took him like he was just the bare face. No one took him yeah. serious. So when he finally got cast as Aquaman, that because you know he's married to um, Lisa Bonet. Yeah. So he was just like From my Cosby show. They have, they have two small children he was like i i was like you know lisa doesn't act anymore he was like my family oh how am i gonna feed my family and then he got aquaman he was like game changers it's life changing so for him to have his friend i feel like that would be cool that would be cool i hope i hope they do that because i don't fuck amber heard why are we still giving her money she's probably not getting any more money now but um all i want to say salute to sax snyder for you know making this justice league movie dream come true and hopefully Warner Brothers will stop all that bullshit production they got going on and right. I don't know I mean we're probably we're probably at this point like it's too late you know because like I said they legit 100% not going with the Sack Snyder cut but if, because it's if we, can, done. we can't just take it from them and I just I'm glad that you know God I'm so I you know rest in peace to his daughter um, I'm glad that he was strong enough to even come back and do this because he lost his. Uh, she, you know, so I. It's. It, yeah, I just feel like Warner Brothers is so wrong for moving the project on without him. With or, when his daughter had had died, I just really felt like they. Very they insensitive. Done, huh? Very insensitive. Yeah, I really just feel like they should have just took the ill and just not rush it and just we gonna wait till you come back. You know, yeah. wait until he's okay, or until he can at least like sit on with a, a new director to be like, okay, I, I would have, I, I, I want to keep this color scheme because they changed the color scheme, they changed the soundtrack, they changed, they added. The soundtrack was beautiful. In the in the original one, yeah, Zack Snyder's yes, they made it. They I sympathized more with Aquaman being a drunk that was torn with his his heritage. With just with the music alone, because you got him drinking, and then they're playing rock music. I don't feel bad for this guy. I don't fucking. This guy's an asshole. <laughs> and it was like when they changed the music, it's somber. the The lighting is different. It's just like I I can't. I don't want to help you because I don't want to fight for people. I don't know my. It's like saying I don't want to fight for my mom. I don't know her family. I don't know her peoples. Fuck mm-hmm. fuck. That's basically what he was saying, and I could relate to that. Like I don't know my dad's side of the family. I don't. Them. The main the main character everybody feels sorry for is Cyborg mm. because you really had a chance to have a like legit cyborg like storyline that it falls with his parents and everything more. You you get to have a better understanding of a cyborg. They than, didn't say he died in the first one, huh? Huh? They never said nothing about his mom dying in the first one, huh? No, no, no. They ain't like like I said, the cyborg we was given in Justice League, the Josh Weed version in 2017 or 18, whatever. Like I said, we didn't know much shit about him. You know, I mean, like I said, it's very sad. Like you got this legit great actor, played a good ass cyborg for the Zack Snyder version. And mm-hmm. it, it it was a way to build up his own solo movie. In the future, like a lot of people didn't didn't really get to see the potential of Cyborg, like his abilities. Like in the Zack Snyder, you get to see it's, the abilities. The way they explained it was so good. Yeah, they, you just you didn't see that. You didn't see that in in the Justice League in 2017. So for him, the the plot the the plan is for have everybody else to come back except Ben Affleck and and and, and Henry Cavill. You know the Superman versus Batman, so they 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 talking about recasting them and rebooting the Justice League series. But I'm like, it just it does it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I'm just yeah, I don't. And Ray that. Fish, I'm, I'm bet I'm I'm betting money that Ray Fish is not coming back to play a cyborg I, because 
Poor baby. And I and I just like how they touched on the fact that because when we got Josh Whedon's, they just threw Cyborg at us. He was already Cyborg, and that's all we knew. And then all we knew. Cyborg from like Teen Titans, so they don't really know the extent of what he can do. I'm glad that they let us know that not only was he a star athlete, but he was a fucking genius to begin with. So he could have yeah. hacked computers. He hacked into the computer system for his college to change someone's grades. And mm-hmm. that's not easy. So the fact that he already had the knowledge to do that and now he has the the like the body capacity to just do it anywhere, any like at any time, that was so cool. And they yeah. didn't show, they didn't show like like how was he able to communicate with Diana when they met in the first time? We didn't know that. We didn't and then they didn't explain in Josh Whedon's like, why is this character that we don't know about able to separate the mother boxes? Because remember he separated the mother boxes in the yeah. first one. But it was just like we had no now they just we just were supposed to assume that we we're supposed to know that he was capable of doing that and they didn't really let us know like how they didn't let us know like it, it helped us know why the mother box would, was going to bring back superman because like it brought him back to life so we didn't know we like they didn't explain that at all in the other movie and we were just like okay why do we think this box is going to bring Superman back if we throw it in the water and charge it up? Tell you, man, just, just watching the Zack Snyder version and watching Josh, it makes you want to go to Josh Whedon's house, run up to him, and just beat the fuck out of him. Like, it's don't just, but just, he needs an ass whoop. Because I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and Josh Whedon has, you know, made a lot of things that I love. It's just that, that ain't it. That, that was saying, like, you, like, I like, mean, you I should have brought in Frank Miller, not Frank Miller. Um, Frank Miller does graphic novels. The guy who did the Frank Miller's, um, was that Zack Snyder? You who thought Sin City? Sin City and um, Watchmen. Zack Snyder. Who Let did? Me look it up. Those are who did those? Because whoever they they should have they should have gotten a director who's used to filming the same way that Zack Snyder was already going. You know what I mean? That's like saying if you wanted Wonder Woman, the original Wonder Woman, and then that guy, that director, Patty Jenkins went away, and then you bring in Taika Waititi, and then you get something like Thor Ragnarok, and it's like that's not even that those two directors don't make the same type of movies. Zack so Snyder, um, Zack Snyder directed Watchmen. That's what I thought. You can tell because look at the way that the look at the way that it's set up. The movies, the darkness. Yes. But who did it on Sin City? Because those were both Frank Miller books. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Frank Miller and Robert Rodriguez. They should have brought. That's what they should have did. Because Sin City and Watchmen, you could tell that they're they're from the same um, author, right? And then yeah. so movies are filmed similar even though they have different directors so since they should have did they shouldn't have brought in someone who's directing thing is like i like bright colors and bright sounds and rock music they should have brought in someone who could direct like him and you already know that Rob, robert rodriguez directed the same frank miller same author and you could tell that those were in the same kind of universe yeah right? but we like i said we're we're talking about one brothers that they do, yeah. Just, just, just ain't good with when it comes to casting and and tying yeah. things into comic books and stuff. It's just they have the, the they have the the potential. They have the, the potential scripts like you have the comic books, you know what I'm saying, and you have the potential directors like Zack Snyder and and some other people, but they 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 so focus on bullshit, like. Like I said, here are the projects we're getting. Uh, Satana, she's like a superhero yeah. magician. So they finally want to bring a magician into their into their fold because Satana. Yeah, but who, is, who the fuck? You don't. You know who they should have made a movie on? Raven. Yeah, I, I'd rather take Raven, Raven than her. Add, like, a whole devil, and then a Raven, and it has a whole like power struggle and then in turn she joins the just i mean the um, teen titans that would have been a good story yeah Tom- i mean this is this this like with cyborg if they had focused on the sex snyder and focus on more of a storyline with cyborg um this had could have been a way of building up a future teen titans movie like right. besides, like get rid of that 
close enough to 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 know his new Robin, because right yeah. now Batman's Robin is dead. He's gonna get a new Robin. So eventually, it would have made sense that you know, in a cyborg movie, he runs into Batman, who's running around with a new nigga, a new what Tim Drake. Because who's we never who is the who's dead? Who what Robin is that? It's not it's not the Red Hood one. It's the is the other one. Dick Grayson. Yeah, they said it's supposed to be uh, Dick Grayson. I think. Okay, it can't be J. It, it can't, so it's not Jason Todd. No, because they they. they they were talking about that, and they said the the Robin that's supposed to die is not the Jason Todd that turns into Red Hood one. It's, it's the other one. I don't want to say it's Dick Grayson. I want to say it's the one after Jason Todd. Tim Drake. Tim Drake, yeah. Tim Drake, Tim Drake is the Robin that eventually... Tim Drake is the Robin, the last Robin, who runs with Batman at the same time as Batgirl, at the same time as Barbara Gordon, and then they end up falling in love. Then it probably would make sense. It probably makes sense for the Dick Grayson one to die then. Yeah, so why would they kill the last one? Because if they were planning on doing like a Teen Titans, it should be Dick Grayson. Because Dick Grayson turns into Nightwing, and if you don't want to go down the Nightwing route, cool. But if you kill if you're not gonna kill Jason Todd, who the Joker already killed, why would you kill the last Robin? You already know if you want to I don't know, forward. but they they got Nightwing as a potential uh TV and series. And so that's Dick. But in the Titans, um, I don't know if you watched the Titans TV show. I started it, but then I, I, I don't know what happened. I never finished it. No, I ain't never, I ain't I, never watched it. Let me tell you what Robin, who, what Robin that is. I don't know if that Robin is Dick, Tim, or Jason. I don't remember which Robin that is. I don't know. I'll let the people who watch it and tell us in the comments and we'll figure it out. But already running with Raven. They haven't met Cyborg yet. And then he's already running with Beast Boy. I would have loved to see Beast Boy. They don't explain Beast Boy that much because he came into the Teen Titans cartoon. Like, they, most people know him from the cartoon. And I don't really know Beast Boy like that because I don't really know DC as much, as much as I know Marvel. So I don't really know Beast Boy's origin. Like, I know Ravens and um, Star uh, Starlight or whatever. Starlight? Starlight is in Teen Titans. Her name's Starlight? What? Yeah. That, they don't sound right to me. But yeah, like, they, they, those people, and people were so mad when they cast that black girl with that um, dollar store shake and go wig as Starlight. Oh, they was mad. And I'm not mad that she's black because she's an alien. She could be, and she's always tan in the cartoon. So she could be, yeah, she, a could light, be she could have been a light skinned black girl or any kind of like Afro Latina or any kind of darker skin uh, POC. And no yeah. one would have done anything because she's an alien. But my problem is now, why'd you get her that synthetic ass, Jerry Curl ass wig that I could have bought that at the dollar store? That's my problem. Not because you casted a black girl to play Starlight, because the way you're dressing her makes her look dis dis disrespectful. Yeah, just, like Shamar Moore wearing braids in the Tyler Perry movie. Single black person on set that says, ooh, ooh baby, that, look, that don't look good. They probably did have one on set. That's probably what happened. I, I need to just be on set to be like, that does not look good. And you don't even have to get a human wig. I'm not saying go buy a $3,000 human wig made, pre-plucked lace made for, like, no, I'm not saying that. But that, that shit, no. They could have done way, they could have done way more better. Oh, shit. This is DC's problem. They got too many things going on and none of them connect because no. they they have that Harley Quinn TV show because that's why people like that's why people are excited about King Shark and Suicide Squad because King Shark was in Harley Quinn's adult cartoon. Yeah. They have the Titans because you remember DC had their own little app or it was like Warner Brothers or what was that DC app where you could watch Titans the the uh live action series and then all the cartoons. Uh. I yeah, it was, yeah. I, I, it was really whack, but it's like they have that. They have Titans. Then they have the Swamp Thing show, which I heard was Ooh, really, bro. and then it got canceled. Yeah, which easily led into Poison Ivy. And then they got um, two different Batmans going on at the same time. Two they different. Got bat, they got a black Batwoman. 
they got a black Batwoman. They got that Gotham series. They got two different Batmans going on with Robert and, and um, Ben. They got two different Jokers. They got Joaquin and Jared. They got that Teen Tit that Titans show, that live action show. They got Suicide Squad and Suicide Squad with some of the same actors, but they forget about the other one. Then they got like the Zack Snyder, which you're just supposed to complete about, forget about that completely because you weren't supposed to see this to begin with, which makes sense. But then he's like throwing Easter eggs like Jared Leto's Batman. Did Jared Leto did that scene for free? Did you know that? He, he wasn't in I that. Did, he, I don't they, know. He did it for free. They added, they added that Zack Snyder cut uh, and he wasn't in it originally. No, but, then, but he, they they did do the, like the last they did like the last minute of that scene. Like he said, I didn't even go to the studio. I did it at the back of my house. Yeah, because Zack Snyder said that they wanted Jared Leto to be dressed a certain way, or they didn't want to pay for um, Jared Leto to do like to come back or something like that. So Zack Snyder set up a green screen in his backyard for that nightmare scene, and Ben and um, Jared just came to Zack's house. And Jared was like, I'll do it for free. And then Jared did a lot. They did three endings. There's three different ones. So I hope that yeah, there's three different endings. And he picked the one that that, that yeah. related to like the more emotion of, of a Joker reaction and stuff. Like he said, it said all of them. And one where Joker wins and one where they both are at a standstill. And he put the one where Batman wins and Joker trembles into the movie. And I thought it was I thought it was really good. But yeah. So oh, yeah. Snyder, um, I mean, so Jared Leto did it for free, and because he was like, "Well, fuck you, you gotta pay me." Like, I, I want to do this. I want to show people that I'm a good Joker, and he did. And he I understand did. the Joker, and it's just the material he was given was stupid. Plus, the way it was edited because they cut all of his shit out of the Suicide Squad, all of it. They cut all of yeah. it, yeah. and then so well, basically because Zack Snyder let him still do the Joker and show people that he can do the Joker. The line where people realized he was in the movie that was in the trailer was um, "There comes a time," and he so he so people were like geeked about that. So he started selling shirts yeah. on a band called Nine Inch Nails. They're a really good big rock band. So he oh, started yeah. on his Nine Inch Nails um, page shirts that says "There comes a time" or something like that, and he's the proceeds go to suicide prevention for Zach's daughter. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. that was so nice. Yep. He yeah. worked free. Of course, I'm gonna do this. Like you, I I feel for why you didn't get to complete your vision. Of course. And I was like, oh, I like Jared Leto. They be talking shit about Jared Leto ever since he no, was. I mean, I, I had to represent Jared Leto because he's he's from where I'm from. He's from Shreveport, Bossier, and like Shreveport is like basically like crossing the bit crossing the bridge to get to Bossier. So I oh, have I to I, I had to represent for Jared Leto. No, he was from Louisiana. I always know him from my so-called life. He was Jared Padalecki, and I we I always had like a, a crush on him, and it was so weird. And then um, I'm glad that he like went on and he's acclaimed, and I uh, he was snubbed in the Oscars. I heard too for his movie with Denzel that just came out. Little the little things he and, like, played. He played. He played a really good weird ass character. So I he, mean, he, he gets into it. He's like Heath Ledger. Mm -hmm. So that's why. Still did the Joker. He's like Heath Ledger, but he didn't approve. He didn't like the way that they styled the Joker because he was just like that, like clearly like um, uh, what you tie dyed hair and then the just with the tattoos and the gold teeth and stuff. It, you notice that when they show him again, it's more smear. It looks more like the the Joker, more towards like um, Dark Knight, more like mm -hmm. Heath Ledger. Joker, more like a realistic Joker. Yeah. Where it, it the, just... the Joker, the Joker that we wanted to see for a while, you know, yeah. nothing to copy Heath Ledger, but uh, just a better version of Joker from the Suicide Squad that we was given. And like, this really? is the type of Joker we were looking forward to. It's, it's the, that's what you that you said the right thing. It's the type of Joker because you're not copying Heath Ledger. It's mm. just. That's the type of Joker we want to see on film because you can't really give us the cartoon Joker. No, you can't. Because it doesn't it it doesn't translate well. It doesn't translate like I I like the way that they went about the Joker in Gotham. I didn't really watch Gotham, but I I really do like that the actor that Gotham played the Joker. was Gotham was a good ass show. The the, the actor Cameron McGulligan, I like him um in um 
shameless. But I like the way that they they made him like kind of go crazy. And then it was just like he was already had a weird personality, but then it turned out to be his twin or whatever. But then it turned out to not be his twin. It, it was just weird. But it was just like the way that they made him look, it just seemed more not comic y, like a believable this is because yeah. you can really translate the fucked up makeup and the like messed up skin and the dirty looking clothes on the cartoon. Yeah. And the like, sad thing is that even that joke is still better than the Suicide Squad joke. And it's the same actor. So it just goes to show you that it's not Jared Leto's fault. No. That little no. scene he had in the Zack Snyder cut was better than everything they put in Suicide Squad. And he had so much more to give in Suicide Squad, but they cut it. And he yeah. went like, a methodical actor for that scene, too. For that. For, oh. for, and they cut all that shit. And I feel so bad. And I yeah. can they completely like and you notice that they're rebooting everything where they fucked up like they didn't like the way the direction went a suicide squad with that act with that director so now they're redoing it they, they did, are they're redoing everything they, the the justice league went so they're like well here goes zach's because we don't want to lose lose you guys because we are we we are doing a bad job compared to marvel we are doing the bad job so if we just kind of recotton you know redo it with with actor with with and they lucked up. DC lucked up on getting James Gunn. Because had no, it, they had lucked it, up on getting James Gunn because Disney had fired James Gunn over some bullshit tweet that he right. tweeted a long time ago. Right. And the crazy part is Disney was like, oh, we're going to fire James Gunn because of this. Because I'm pretty sure they felt pressure to fire him because of that. And then turned around the entire Guardians of the Galaxy cast quit with him. Yep. Quit with them. So there was like, now we have to bring them back. And then when they brought them back, because Guardians of the Galaxy was supposed to come out this year. But then yep. by the time they brought him back, he was already committed to doing, he was already doing Suicide Squad. So now we have to yep. wait. Now we have to wait. Because that was supposed to be in the beginning of Phase 4. Yep. Like that was after Doctor Strange. Because we were already, yep. by, now, by now we were already supposed to have seen, um, we, we were supposed to have seen being almost April 2021, uh, Black Widow by now, Doctor Strange by now, uh, Spider Man by now, Loki by now, Captain and Will, I mean, Falcon and Winter Soldier should have already been done. Um, Wonder, a Wanda Vision should have already been done. So we yeah. should have already been well into phase four, and we were supposed to get Guardians of the Galaxy in between that. I just hope it doesn't like, because now we're getting it after uh, Love and Thunder, I think, instead of before. Which I don't know if that's going to make sense because it. Black they probably gonna find. I mean, one thing about you know last Marvel TV. Studios, they 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 they're not going to fuck up bad as Warner Brothers with DC movies. So they they going to do the best they can to make it sense. I know that. So I have faith in them. Mm-hmm. They 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 really they really haven't fucked up continuity when it comes to their films and TV shows for right now. So. And yeah, Guardians of the Gal- Galaxy three is supposed to come out, but you know, due to COVID, everything got pushed back, so it really wouldn't have mattered at this point. But we would have got it first wave before uh, Suicide Squad two, though. I-, I agree with that. Yeah, because James Gunn was supposed; it was already supposed to be in production. Like it was supposed to be coming out this year. It's supposed to be like an editing part of it right now. But because James Gunn couldn't even come back. When they were like, all right, you're not fired anymore. We was like, well, I already got another job. I got another contract. Yeah, they were like, damn. <laughs> and everybody on everybody on set with Guardians of the Galaxy would be like, all right, great fucking job, Disney. Now we got to wait for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Good good, good fucking the, job. Right. The first person they lost was Sean Gunn, <laughs> Gunn's brother, who plays the Rocket. I mean, Bradley Cooper is Rocket's voice. But the person mm-hmm. who gets and does his animatronics... Who who gets down on the ground in the suit and does rocket is his is his brother. Now what Justice League actors should have done, they should have done the same shit like Guardians of the Galaxy had did. When they mm-hmm. heard that Josh Whedon was coming along and noticed all this bullshit, they were like, you know what? We we quit until y'all get this shit figured out. That's they what could, they should have done. They could have easily uh waited and did that because um they could have easily waited into that because the reason that because it was James Gunn got fired, you know, so the, people were like expecting him to be replaced. But Zack Snyder's daughter died. 
Yeah, so, I would have definitely, I would have definitely, like, damn, I need to stop hitting that table. Like, if I, it was so much of a drastic change going on, like, especially, like, Ray Fisher, and I think this is, like, Ray Fisher's first time acting on big screen, because he, they picked him up from, like, doing plays and auditions and stuff, but for the rest of the other season actors, like, if there was, like, a big difference of this man's vision that would have been brought to light in a better way. Mm-hmm. And Josh Weeder was fucking that all up. I would have just like, you know what? I quit, dude. Like this dude, daughter done died. Like we need to wait. What? Right. They could have just gave him some like, how much time do you think you need? Add three months onto that, and then we'll come and back. And we already, and then especially if we already knew, like mm-hmm. the the plans of Justice League two and three and everybody else's, like. Storyline that would have happened after Zack Snyder's cut. I was like, man, no, nah, I quit. Like, my, my, especially Superman Henry Cavill. Like, if I knew that Justice League Three was gonna be my own storyline, like, man, no, nah, I quit. I just wait. But now I wait. I'll try to get some work, but I know I got a whole. Which he did. Like he did quit at first or something like that. Like he 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 quit. Henry did. No, you know Henry didn't quit. You know what he did. He got cat. He um was like, well, this movie's on pause, so he went and got, took another movie, and that's why when Josh Whedon came back, came into it, and they were like, well, because he thought they were gonna pause. Yeah, they, he he was doing uh, Mission Impossible. They all thought that they were gonna pause. So when Henry grew his mustache for his new role, and then Josh was like, we gotta reshoot. I need you to not have a mustache, and he they had to like digitally edit it. I mean, they look really stupid. So it was just like they went on with their lives because they're like, let this man heal. And it was easy to just move on to Wonder Woman because she was set in the past anyway. So let's just knock yeah. this. Yeah, they should have just right. They should have just they should have just fucking waited. And <laughs> I'm mad that they cut Kersey Clemens out of the original one because she was always in there. She was always in the movie. And they cut her out, and then they just put her her stuff back in. Iris West, like that whole scene was really cool. I like how they made note that when he starts running, it causes so much friction. His shoes explode. Yeah, I saw that. As soon as he stepped out there, uh, as soon as he stepped out, he lost his shoes. I like that because technically, physics that makes sense. I started running so fast, I caused so much friction in my shoes. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like that's smart. And now, now he back he back up in a pet store with no damn shoes on. And like, man, where your shoes at? Oh, I don't know. They should have they should have put that part up in though. I like how um I like how um sorry I'm eating strawberry. Go ahead. It's okay. Go ahead. To, uh I uh what else to say? Um but it's it's so much it's so much on DC about. and Warner Brothers that we can critique on for days and days. Like my my homeboy that works in a hospital, he he was in so much of a rant. He created this group chat with me and a couple of other guys just ranting on Justice League and, and everything else. And when we get done, I'm gonna I'm gonna send him this I'm gonna, I'm gonna send him this video by the way. Um <laughs> we can we can we can go on for hours and you know I could tag I could tag the Warner Brothers CEO in this movie they they ain't gonna do a damn thing and stuff they know they could have had done better and stuff and I want them to watch this shit. They right. into- so if we get enough people and enough petition uh, signatures, who knows what we can do? Because nobody, the- like I said, they, they fucked us so bad. Nobody don't want to watch none of their other films. They can't, but they sell, but they see that what the potential, what the potential of a certain director could do, because Patty Jenkins. Because look at Thor. Thor was like one of the worst trilogies in MCU. It was boring, and it was just like, mm. and then Taika Waititi gets it for one fucking film and completely turns Thor into a completely different character. Yeah, Thor Ragnarok. So who yeah. directed the first one or two Thor? I can't remember who directed it, but I know Natalie Portman was like, I'm over it. But Taika Waititi is doing the new Thor, and she was like, all Welcome right. Thor. And then Thor, Chris Hemsworth even said, 
Thor is done because his contract is up. And he was just like, oh, with the right script and director, I'll, I would come back. And look, he's still here with Taika Waititi. So you see yeah. what people like to be led and not like bossed around. And yeah. people said that Josh Whedon was a, a boss instead of a director. Yeah. He said that a lot. And yeah. he was, it was just so much better to just be like, let me know your vision so I know how to execute it instead of just telling me to do this. Yeah. And see, I like the first. I only I only like Thor 1 and 3. The second one was kind of boring. Uh, somebody named Alan Taylor. He directed uh, Thor Dark World. Who? Um, oh, no wonder. He he directed Terminator Genesis. There you have it, folks. That shit was garbage. Yeah, he doesn't really have much of a track record directing. And let me tell you, I got into screening through the Navy to see Terminator Genesis before it even came out. Yeah. Gave me a free T-shirt and everything. <laughs> I went to myself. when I was in Virginia. When I was in the Navy, I used to go to movies all by myself because the Navy you get a lot of. Pre-screening the things I see, I saw CIA with Kevin Hart and The Rock before it came yeah. out. Ex Machina, Ex Machina was a good movie. Yes. Um, I saw a couple. Of, I saw a couple of things before they came out in regular theaters because of the Navy. But I was excited to see Terminator Genesis because Terminator One and Two are my favorite, mm-hmm. and it ends there. Even though I did the third one, but those two are my favorite. So that they were reconning that. And it's like going back and seeing the same situations play out from like a different perspective. The idea was cool. Yeah. Storyline was stupid as fuck. Mm. Okay, let me. Uh, I know we done shift gears just a little. <laughs> I'm gonna shift gears really hard, real quick. Mm-hmm. Since we we're talking about Terminator, Terminator Dark Fate. I was liked it. really. I loved it. I, I, I loved, loved it. Terminator Dark Fate. That's like that's the Terminator Dark Fate. Like James Cameron came back and and just fixed everything that, because of well from the second one it made sense to me it like you see this is this is like another prime example like when you have other directors try to direct movies mm-hmm. outside the rim of the oh, original let's... director's perspective mm-hmm. like this lets you know you need to stick with the same director unless they really don't want to do it anymore but. You gotta legit have the same director with at least exact same vision than the one previously because if you don't, you're throwing everything out of whack, it's just gonna be ass. I guarantee you, every director, (laughs) especially with something as big as like Terminator, who it's already got a a whole like um, universe or like MCU or DCU, I'm pretty sure that once a director gets hired, they already put a vision in motion. For more than just that movie. Like, oh, I, yeah. when they say, oh, I'm directing a character that's already established, I, this is what I want in the movie, and going forward, I want this character to be like this. So you gotta let that that person, like, finish it to completion, or if someone else tries to take the character in between that, the character arc just seems kind of like, why would that character, why were, why are they doing that? And I, you see this exactly. happen all the time with, like, Shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes did Grey's Anatomy and How to Get Away with Murder, and you know a couple other things for for years, three years yeah. ago, she quit. And when I tell you, I still watch Grey's Anatomy because it, at this point I've been doing it for my entire life, pretty much. I feel like, and I'm invested. But you can see the like tonal change into it. Like it's like it doesn't make these characters aren't acting like they were before. Like the writing is different, the pacing of is just it just you can tell that this isn't the same person's story. Yeah. Like someone coming in in the middle of you writing your biography and, f- and finishing it off. Like, what? I would never do that. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's... I mean, it, it's, it's really it's really like we have examples from movies and TV series. It's like... Tim Burton, everybody Batman. Know. Burton gave away the Batman. Tim Burton's Batman were good. Michael Keaton, I always say this. Michael, when people say, who's Batman? Who's your Batman? And I always say, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton is my Batman, and Michelle Pfeiffer is my Catwoman. Like when I like oh, Christian, Michelle Pfeiffer. Christian Bale was a really really good Batman. 
But when I think of Batman, I think of Michael Keaton and his neck can't turn. He talks like yeah. this. Yeah. I, think of, <laughs> I think of the Penguin and I think of Catwoman and that's who I think of. And you see what happened with, because all of the original Batman trilogies were all supposed to be the same Batman, even though they're cast, it was three different Batmans casted. Yeah. So, which was stupid because no one, people watch them singularly because they just don't, they don't mesh together as like a trilogy. And another um, thing, like we, we were supposed to been have like our own Batman with the Ben Affleck because Batman, because Ben Affleck was going to direct Batman himself mm-hmm. and he was going to have an uh, introduction of him versus Deathstroke, like at the end of Zack Snyder, Justice should- League. Well, not really the end, but before the epilogue and stuff. Like you see, you see Deathstroke appearing on screen, and that was going to be Ben Affleck's way of having an introduction, like him and Deathstroke, like finally, like throwing hands, throwing bowls on screen. But the way how Warner Brothers saw him, how he wanted to direct it, they didn't want him to direct it a certain way. So Ben Affleck said, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, Fuck it. I don't know what y'all want to do. I have a question. Because I yeah. don't remember. Because you, you recently watched Whedon's version again, right? No, I ain't watched this version again. I, I, I ain't watched watch, I I ain't, I ain't watch Josh Whedon's version since Theaters? 2018. No, I went to the movies and saw that bullshit. Anyway, yeah, I went to the movies too. I saw so I saw it when it first came out, and I never watched it again. That's how much I didn't like it. Yeah, I but didn't watch it again. So I have question because the the um, epilogue that include in, in, in Snyder's cut that included um, Luther talking to Deathstroke, which was also in the um, it was changed up a little bit. It was different a little bit, but that was yeah. also in Whedon one. Did Deathstroke have his mask on in, when they met the first time? Or was he always Joe Megan Mello? On, on Justice League 2017 one? Mm-hmm. Was he always Joe Manganiello? Because Joe Manganiello plays Deathstroke in the Titans movie. So it was like Zack Snyder wanted to like make everybody happy because in the, in the oh, Titans... Oh, wait. He, he showed up in the Titans? In the show The Titans, the live after action Titans, I was just telling you about with the black girl and the crazy hair... Deathstroke is on it because you know Deathstroke and the Titans are always like that's that's the main bad guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joe Manganiello is Deathstroke, but that was before that. That this all happened like after Snyder Cut's thing came out. Joe Manganiello appeared in Titans as Deathstroke. So I was thinking like, was Joe Manganiello always Deathstroke, or when Deathstroke met um, Luther in the original version? Because the version is different. Like the conversation and everything is different. Like it's a whole different scene. So when when he met a Deathstroke, did Deathstroke have a hood on? Did he have his uh, mask on? Yeah, but he took it off. Did he? Was it always Joe Manganiello? Yeah, it's a, it was always Joe Man- Manganiello. It's so in crazy. In 2017, in the, in the sex oh. night, because it's, it's always been him. Oh, cause, so that's why he was cast for Titans then. I, uh, I didn't cool. even know that. Like I said, I, I, I didn't watch Titans. Like I said, yeah. I didn't even know. As Deathstroke. So I thought that, that was, I thought that they brought him there because he was... Um, Titan in, in, in uh or in Titans. I didn't know that he was always Deathstroke at the end of the that happened so long ago and he was in Yeah, the- yeah. Like he he showed up with the same costume, took off his helmet and everything. Which he's a he's I don't know who else would play as a good Deathstroke. I think he will he he will be a great Deathstroke. Oh he, man. Speaking of I, casting, um people. did you see who they cast for Doctor Fate? Okay, you remember the old school dude from 007, Pierce Bronson? Is Doctor Fate? Yeah, they cast they casted him as Doctor Fate. That's so crazy. When we were born, Pierce Bronson was uh, uh that was um uh, 007. When I used to think of James Bond, I did think of Pierce. I didn't know growing up that there was like five other people that were James Bond before him. Mm-hmm. So growing up, when we think of James Bond, we think of Pierce, Pierce Bronson, Bronson. Pretty, because. Yeah. We- well, we grew up all period because, like, at, right after like the nineteen eighties and the seventies, uh, James Bond, it was Pierce Bronson. Then when it came to the two thousands, like the new age, right. uh, Daniel Craig. Yeah, because it's uh, that there's been there depending on your generation. It's just like who? It's just like when you ask who's Batman to you, who's who's James Bond? Michael Keaton. 
But I yeah, I mean, I can I can see him I can see him playing as a good Doctor Strange, and and they throwing all like all these other stuff about like the future DC movies. Um, they also talking about Black Adam, uh, supposed to be getting like a teaser trailer soon and stuff. <laughs> I heard after the Justice League bombed and they moved forward with all the other movies, none of the uh, all the other movies did good. Like um, yeah, like Shazam and Aquaman and Wonder and Woman. Shazam did good too. Yeah, Shazam, Shazam. Like I said, these are the top three movies: uh, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Shazam. They all did good right after that, which is sad. <laughs> which uh, is. Sad. It wasn't an already established. Had, had just Zack Snyder's plan worked out the way it was supposed to, and then they added those movies, they would have like a, a real universe. Yeah, they, they would have like a, a real legit universe. And I feel like it just makes me sad because it's just like you never know what's going to happen in life. Just like the blip, you never know what's going to happen in life, and you know what Zack Snyder didn't expect for his daughter to commit suicide. But the fact that they just kept the train rolling without him is the what is this? here this downfall that was the whole downfall of it they just they were like so determined to beat marvel that they couldn't just take a break until they had a movie that was going to legit beat marvel if they just had waited they would have had like a if they had waited for the sex night of one sex night would probably have beaten the avengers probably i yeah, you know, see it you know at this point you know what i'm thinking dc should just stick to making games because <laughs> their injustice games are great games. They're and they Arkham. Batman games. Arkham, that's what I was going to say. Their Arkham games are great games. Marvel versus Mortal Kombat was, I mean, DC versus Mortal Kombat That was ass. It wasn't a good game. But the storyline wasn't bad. Like, I can see now that Mortal Kombat has, a, like, an actual real movie coming out that I'm very, very excited about. Can I do that podcast? I love Mortal Kombat. And it comes out next month. Yeah, we're going we to gonna have to talk about that next weekend. We are already two hours in. <laughs> yes, but just edit this part out. But I want to do well, this. in there. Just go ahead and say it. I ain't going to edit it out. Just go and say it. <laughs> when, when that comes out and it comes time to discuss that, I want to do that video. Think of me. I want to come back and do that because if I know anything about comics all that stuff. I know more about Mortal Kombat probably than anything, and it's weird that it's like Mortal Kombat. It's not I, weird. And I, like I said, I'm, I'm not so going to replace you with nobody else. Reading the comics, I spend. I know like the character arcs. I know like where per people were in in the first timeline, and the timeline got retconned, and then yeah. I know, and I, you know, I, I said Jade was my go to cosplayer. Yeah. So. Yeah, you I, said Jade. You said Jade and uh, G Gamora is your second go-to cosplayer. I I love talking about. So we'll we'll get on that. But yeah, it's been two hours. So um, I guess you wanna you wanna um, in here. I'm just it just makes me sad about the Zack Snyder thing because it could have been so good. But I, know, I but we, like I said, we could talk about that Zack Snyder cut till we blew in the face. But like. If Marvel was smart. They wouldn't just they wouldn't take Zack Snyder's position, but they would use the WB's game stories. Because that in turn could turn into a crossover with with the uh Mortal Kombat universe. Because Mortal Kombat does have a game with them and it's and then and then the mo that would make a really good movie of them crossing over universes that would make a good movie also the injustice storyline could still be explored a little less like Zack snyder and a little more like the injustice league yeah but like i said like um or through the arkham storyline and that would be amazing yeah but they they're not planning to use a Zack snyder again they, yeah. they're not like they, they like i said they got the own they got the own uh projects they want to focus on and they're not thinking about Zack Snyder, what they want to work on with him anymore. I said that they shouldn't take Zack Snyder's things. They should just run with the story. Because the storyline Zack Snyder had was kind of similar to Injustice. But they should yeah. just take the Injustice storyline. And just pull that whole storyline. Because if you take, if you watch the Injustice movies, 
the the cutscenes without yeah the game cutscenes on YouTube. It's still a two, it's a two hour movie without any of the fighting without fighting. If you watch the cutscenes all the way through, because I did that, I did it recently because I forgot what I was doing it for. But yeah. I did it, I did it recently and watched in just this the first game just cutscenes, and then the second movie just the cutscenes, and it's four hours, so it's two mm-hmm. hour movie. So if they just took that storyline, if those took those storylines, that would be a cool storyline to go, which is kind of similar to what Zack Snyder had. But it's not really Zack Snyder's because it's already published. It's it's a comic book canon and it's game canon. So it's like, you're not really ripping off Zack Snyder, but you're not really n- not going towards what he was already getting. Yeah, but I'm t- they're, 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 they're not going to do it. What they could do, since Zack Snyder is no longer working with DC uh or Wonder Brothers anymore. They need to pull Sack they need to pull Sack Snyder and have him direct or do like a TV series of Punisher or <clears throat> something like that, like in future projects. Like I'm have thinking- Sack Snyder have Sack Snyder direct a, a a Marvel series or, or or movie with a dark character like like a Moon Knight or like nice. I said, Punisher or Dare Daredevil because he can bring out a greedy scene with these characters. Any of the Marvel characters, bringing them into the MCU. Any of the Marvel Netflix Marvel, bringing them in because they they were all very gritty characters. You know what I mean? On yeah. The because Zack Snyder is is a gritty director. Like he wants you to feel very depressed when you're done watching his movie, even if it was a happy ending, just because the tone is different. Yeah. And he, he really he, he makes you feel emotion when you when you watch the movie and not just like, oh, what is going on? Like, you know what I mean? So I could see him doing any one of like Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Night Night uh, Moon Knight. I can see him doing any of those gritty characters, Punisher for real, because Punisher, if we're talking gritty, he's the ultimate anti hero. Yeah. Him him and Venom are the ultimate anti-heroes. It's just like, look, I'm, I want to save people too, but I'm not going to spare the people doing bad. Yeah, so this this is the way for Marvel. Marvel need to holler at, like, you know, they, they see the potential of how Zack Snyder can tie mm-hmm. storylines together and make it, it make sense. Make and, it cohesive. And, Make it make yeah, sense. Yeah, make co- yeah, yeah, make it cohesive and also like have it somewhere like it ties again somewhere in the future, you know. So I don't know. Sack That's Snyder, a- Snack Snyder's have so much potential, it's and crazy. I hate to see that potential goes to like somewhere he, else. He, the crazy part is, I'm gonna watch DC's movies because I just gotta see for myself. But one time, I just want to just be like, wow, that was really like how I felt with Zack Snyder. Like, that was really good. I really want to, I really want DC to succeed. I want it, I want them to, to both be successful. I don't want it to just be like Marvel's good and DC's movies suck. I want them to both be like, yes, a Marvel movie's coming out. Ooh, next month and a DC movie's coming out. You know, mm-hmm. I want that because I was like that when the, when Justice League was supposed to get scheduled to come out. I was ready. And then I was ready, and then the movie I saw was like, mm, "Yo, what is this?" Because I think that came out at the same time as Civil War. What Batman vs Superman? No, the Justice League. The no, Bat- Civil War. It was Civil War and Batman vs Superman that same year. Well, what came out in two thousand seventeen with um, Justice League? Something else came out. I don't know. But I do remember that it was like like a big deal that year because you have like DC versus Marvel because you have like Captain America versus mm-hmm. Iron Man. Then you have like Batman versus Superman. Uh, I would have. It, it was like it was like interviews about it. I would have did that other thing other way around. I, oh well, yeah, that's another thing. I I was looking at the thing where saying like um, the studio that creates. Um, Mortal Kombat games. They're also the the studio that creates um, NetherRealm Studios. They're the studio that creates Mortal Kombat, but they also create Injustice games. 
and they were saying like what game is in the works for them next because you know Mortal Kombat has been on rotation it's had multiple DLC packages for like three, two, three years now. And normally Nether Realms comes out every two years with a new game and they've been alternating between Injustice and Mortal Kombat. And um, they were saying like the next game, they were saying like what they wish they would happen was Marvel versus DC, but they're like Marvel and DC just hate each other. It was like, we wish they could just come together and make money together. Like if we no. could make, they're never going to do it. But, no, it but what, what's, what's in the future though, that was discussed a little while ago that Ed Boone, Ed Boone is planning on developing a Marvel fighting game, just like more combat. But he already did. Just like injustice. I mean, I was gonna say he already in developed, so he's got, got Marvel and DC because he already has DC's characters. Yeah, but that's I remember them saying that um, it was like an interview about Ed Boon working mm. towards other other mm. fighting mm. games. So they were saying like he was either like gonna come back and try to like revamp like a like a Marvel fighting game, and, or was it? Street Fighter. I don't know. Oh, it's probably Street Fighter because, well, Street Fighter has been strictly Capcom for like years. That's why they have the Marvel versus Capcom and yeah. Capcom. But Street I could see, I could see him doing more of a Marvel game than than Street Fighter, though. I don't know because Marvel has their ga- a game right now, which they keep adding DLCs. It's very much in the mm. op- works right now. I feel like, I don't know, Marvel is very, now that it's, you know, part of Disney, very, like, it's, once it's ours, it's, it's ours. Mm-hmm. It just, it's, it's ours. I don't know, but they're changing a little bit. Like, they already agreed to make Deadpool 3 rated R, even though it is under by Disney, so. If have it, then someone else do it. Yeah. And Disney own they own rights to certain characters that are really like rated Ooh. R, like certain like Wait. series. And I'm talking about, like I didn't know, I didn't I didn't know that Predator and Alien is owned by Disney as well too. I didn't know that. Certain countries on Disney Plus, you can get R rated movies like Predator, Alien, um, those those um, in like dark cartoons and stuff like that. But in America, you can't. Yeah, but. but plus, they're yeah. they're making they're making a session they are making a section on Disney Plus where they it's called it. the Star. They already made it in other countries. It's just not available. Oh yeah, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. They already made it, but it's not here for us yet. Mm. Anyway, Point. that's like that's a that's that's a whole nother whole nother thing. Yeah, yeah. get into video games too heavy because that's a whole nother monster that you just awaken. So. Well, we're about to end it here. <laughs> right. Uh, what we can do, uh, I am playing the Avengers Future Imperfect, like with the Hawkeye DS- DLC. So mm-hmm. um, I can, I can like hop on Twitch and I can play it off that and you can watch it or however you want to do it. I've been thinking about doing that. I played a little bit of it last night, so I'm not that. I'm not like too far up into it. Um, the, I just got sleepy. In the game, I need to see all the cutscenes. So if you're playing the game and you're recording it and you just edit the video where it just shows all your cutscenes, right? So totally watch that video. Because if I'm not playing the game, then I just want to know the storyline because I'm not playing, so I don't care to see, you know, because I don't want to. Because one day I might play the game. I don't want to see the secrets of how you found a health here or you. This is the secret room here. Like, just tell me that. Just move the story forward for me. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have it at that. So we're going to cut this one out. I mean, not cut it out. We're going to cut this one short, Laura. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. I hope y'all learned a lot from this. If y'all have any questions, please leave it down in the comments uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, our YouTube channel called The Show About Whatever. And please make sure to like and subscribe. Give me your opinions about today's show. Uh, Kier, do you have anything you want to say before we leave off this show? Um, I don't even want to start because... You going to keep going? Okay. 
All right, we ain't gonna have to say no more after that, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it off here before it gets even more farther. I'm, I, it's your boy Ken Jones. Thank you for watching, Kier. I appreciate your time. Hope y'all enjoyed the show. Peace. Bye.